people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome to Barbie Day. That's right, the FNAF movie's not the only film we stay in here on this channel. Over on my second channel, I'll actually be doing a video ranking my most anticipated films left for this year, and in that video I'll talk a bit about Barbenheimer. But come on, you know I had to decorate the office a little bit for this cinematic event. So if you want to hear me gush about Barbie and a whole bunch of other films, definitely subscribe to the second channel, it's linked down below. But intro aside, welcome back to FNAF News, we got a whole bunch of topics to talk about in today's video, ranging from the FNAF movie, some brand new merch merchandise featuring the withered characters finally as well as a whole bunch of security breach and ruin news so let's not waste any more time here subscribe hit the like button you know all that stuff already first topic is the brand new release of the seventh tales from the pizzaplex book tiger rock we've talked about this book greatly it's got the stories tiger rock the monty within as well as the bleeding heart the descriptions for which are all up on the screen right now as per usual with these books a lot of people were able to find them early before they released but now officially Tiger Rock is out. Next up, we got a few products coming out from Hot Topic. First up, we got this brand new FNAF Chibi Security Breach shirt. So basically, they took the Pizzaplex logo we all know and love and chibified it. Also from Hot Topic, we got some exotic beverage and Soderoni earrings, of all things, all right. Definitely one of the more obscure products we've gotten from Hot Topic, but you know, if you want to rock some soda cans on your ears, this is perfect for you. And lastly, going back to the Pizzaplex logo, we got a brand new pin that also glows in the dark. Moving on now to Hex, Funko has been very slow at making proper merchandise for the withered animatronics from the second FNAF game. And so Hex decided to take things into their own hands. This is a brand new look at their upcoming withered Bonnie plushie. The cool part about Hex's withered Bonnie plush is that he does have a magnetic face. You can take on and off if you want that classic withered Bonnie look, or if you want to see what withered Bonnie would look like if he did still have his face. This withered Bonnie plush was also featured in a recent Daco video alongside the upcoming Mango plushie. And lastly, Daco gave us an update on the upcoming sitting Fredbear in Spring Bonnie plushies. No release date for any of these guys just yet, but hopefully they're coming pretty soon because from the looks of these prototypes, they're looking pretty spot on already. All right, now let's move on to Funko because while they may not be doing the withers, they are giving us yet another FNAF advent calendar. This is the one they gave us last year as you can see, it came alongside a whole bunch of pint-sized hero figures, but with this one, we're actually getting miniature pops. From the looks of it, it seems like we will be getting festive-themed versions of the FNAF animatronics. Of course, we got Santa Chica, Candy Cane, or Peppermint Foxy down at the bottom as well, Freddy and Bonnie with a whole bunch of Christmas lights. On the box, we do see a traditional Ballora pop figure, so it seems like alongside festive-themed characters, we will be getting normal, traditional FNAF characters. And lastly, there's also a Santa-themed version of Foxy, who looks like he might be made out of snow as well. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. This should be coming out pretty soon alongside a brand new Sun and Moon plushie from Funko. You may remember not too long ago, we got the Sun and the Moon plushie. Well, now combine them into one. What do you get? It's this brand new Sun and Moon plushie in one. It stands at 10 inches tall, and it's very interesting that they decided to do two separate versions of the Sun and the moon as two plushies and then also a third plushie where they're together in one like i said this was found on hot topics website today actually and i believe it's up for pre-order as well moving on now to youtube's not a whole bunch of news with them but they did release their brand new security breach plushies wave as well as the sun nightlight and they did send me something and they told i can't leak it but then the next day someone else posted it on twitter so i'm gonna just say Yo, yo, get hyped. If I get in trouble, that's on you guys. You better subscribe and hit the like button right now. <laughs> Lastly, for merchandise news, we actually got a brand new company acquiring the license to make FNAF products, and that company is Figpin. As you can see, they will be releasing brand new Cybercell 3D cell art cards featuring the FNAF gang. From the looks of it, seems like we can expect Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Mangle, Golden Freddy, Toy Chica, Nightmare Foxy as well, so they've got a whole bunch of characters. And also on the side of the box, we can see the rare for the cards, 12 common cards, 9 rare cards, 4 super rare cards, 1 ultra rare, and then 1 hyper rare. Alongside these cards, we'll also be getting security breach pins, the actual fig pins that fig pin is known for. I'll throw some pictures up on screen. You've probably seen these. They're getting super popular. They got a whole bunch of popular IPs aboard. So super crazy that they also got FNAF and I'm really looking forward to what this company can do with their license. And now let's move on to some game news. First up, we got some brand new fanverse news in the form of t -Jock gameplay. That's right, what I believe to be our first proper look at gameplay footage of the Joy of Creation Ignited Collection by Nixon. In this prototype pre 
preview, we can see some gameplay of the first level in the story mode, which is now the office. In this gameplay trailer, we also get a brand new look at Ignited Bonnie with his mechanic in the office. It looks so good already. And lastly, for T-Jock, we got two stills of the office. The first one's kind of an overhead shot of the entire room, basically. And the second screenshot is a bit more grounded. First person view, it seems like, of us behind the desk. The lighting and the rendering in these photos just look absolutely surreal. I'm very excited to see T-Jock in UE5. Moving on now to Security Breach. Not too long ago, we got SB over on the Nintendo Switch. And recently, Maximum Games released the physical versions of Security Breach for the Switch. You got the traditional case, which comes with the game and a sticker sheet featuring some of the characters and the Pizza Plex logo. And they've also launched the Collector's Edition for the Nintendo Switch, which we did do a video of on this channel. You can see everything included in the image on screen. Lastly, for Security Breach, we got something that I don't think anyone was expecting, brand new beta footage of the game. This was found in a portfolio reel for a technical artist at Steel Wool Studios recently, and it shows us some early gameplay of the game. The main thing everyone's talking about, the Monty chase sequence. We did see this quick animation in a gameplay trailer. If you recognize the footage, that's where you saw it from. But now we get an extended look at the chase sequence as well as Monty's animation for running, which is drastically different than the final version. The Utilidors are a lot more open, grand, massive hallways, which are very intimidating. We get a few clips of Gregory walking around the maintenance hall in the West Arcade. This is where we encounter DJ Music Man. And then we also get a look at the kind of vats area, the office area near the kitchen, kind of under the pizza plex. I don't know if it has an official name, but this also has a massive change. You can see the room is now no longer flooded. The office is different as well. We saw that again in an early uh, you know, teaser trailer, and then it completely changed in the final version, so just very surreal to nowadays get beta footage for Security Breach. I'm not gonna lie, I think the Monty Chase sequence looks significantly better in that beta version. His animations for running just look so intimidating and aggressive, amazing compared to what we got in the final game, which was, you know, just kind of, hey, little guy. Either way, I'd love to know what are your thoughts on this beta footage of Security Breach? And now let's move on to Ruin. I did do a whole video dedicated to this, but I'll throw it in this news video quick. The official DLC for Security Breach Ruin is going to be coming out in a few days on July 25th. We got a brand new teaser of the DLC featuring the ruined versions of Chica, Monty, Roxanne, as well as the daycare attendant. All in the lobby, we also got Ray McCaffrey, the executive producer, writing up a newsletter going more in depth with the release of Ruin. It'll be available on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC on Tuesday, July 25th at 12 a.m. PST, which for me is a cool, nice 3 a.m. So that's all the recap news. We did get one more story from Ray McCaffrey, and it's some pretty sad news about the Ruin DLC. He quote retweeted the announcement with, in case you missed it, and before any of you ask, no, there's no map bot. I don't know if I can play this DLC anymore, man. Look. You remove the best part of Security Breach, my boy Mapbot? You can't even have him, like, under some rubble, still trying to hold out a map, trying to give you a map to explore the ruined pizza plex? You couldn't even do that? I'm pretty disappointed, Ray McCaffrey. What the heck, bro? And finally, for this FNAF news video, we gotta talk about the FNAF movie, because we've gotten some insane developments for this upcoming film. First and foremost, main thing I want to address is that the film is still set for an October 27th release. It has not been delayed, it has not been cancelled. If you did miss it, there are a whole bunch of strikes going on in Hollywood with the Actors Guild, the Writers Guild, and because of those strikes, actors involved with certain films cannot promote the films they are, they are a part of, they cannot attend any conventions or premieres they can't even do like social media campaigns so like if a new poster or teaser or trailer comes out they can't even be like hey check out this brand new trailer for blah 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 and unfortunately this does apply to the FNAF film we've seen actors like Kat Connor Sterling who plays Max tweeting out the fact that she can't post about the film anymore Christian Stokes who plays Hank you know Joseph Poliquin who plays Carl also tweeting out the same thing so it's very unfortunate but also very likely we will not see any of the actors involved with the FNAF movie talk about them being involved in the FNAF movie. Unfortunately, it's just a small price we gotta pay to make the film industry better as a whole, even if it does affect us now, which again sucks, but it's gotta happen. As a news reporter, I do feel like it is my duty and my job to give you guys news on this film, but also let it be known, I am in full support of all the strikes. So even though I will continue to be making videos talking about the film, 
Again, keep in mind, I'm in full support of the writers and the actors and everyone striking against Hollywood. Well, that's just a very quick rundown. If you want more information and maybe you want to support in any way, I'm going to leave resources linked uh, down below. But anyways, now let's move on to the actual news, which is the fact that a Peacock page for the FNAF film was set up the other day. As far as I'm aware, you cannot search Five Nights at Freddy's and get the page. You have to scroll down to the upcoming film section, and that's where you'll see this page. Quite frankly, I love the layout of it so far. You got the description horror 2023 that two minute timer at the bottom is just for the trailer hopefully the film's a bit longer than two minutes and then we also got a brand new synopsis for the film on the official fnaf movie website the film follows mike josh hutcherson a troubled young man caring for his 10 year old sister abby played by piper rubio and haunted by the unsolved disappearance of his younger brother more than a decade before so that is confirmation that mike had a younger brother who went missing and now a lot of people have pointed out it'd be pretty hard for the child to go missing if he got bit recently fired and desperate for work so that he can keep custody of abby mike agrees to take a position as a night security guard at an abandoned theme restaurant freddy fazbear's pizzeria but mike soon discovers that nothing at freddy's is what it seems with the aid of vanessa a local police officer played by elizabeth lale mike's nights at freddy's will lead him into unexplainable encounters with the supernatural and drag him into the black heart of an unspeakable nightmare the film also starts stars Mary Stuart Masterson, who, very quickly, if you remember, was cast as a unnamed female villain. Well, now we have confirmation that she is, in fact, Mike's icy Aunt Jane. We also get a bit more info on Kat Connor Sterling and Matthew Lillard's characters, because the description explains that Kat is playing Abby's caring babysitter, which is quite ironic, because if you don't know, Kat actually is a babysitter in real life, and Matthew Lillard will be playing Steve Raglan, Mike's smug career counselor. That we saw in the trailer, and confused a lot of people. So it seems that they're trying to set up this big twist that Steve Raglan Oh, shoot, he's actually William Afton. He's the killer. I think us FNAF fans kind of already knew that even before the film releases, but for general audiences, it could be a nice twist. And quite frankly, that's gonna do it for all the FNAF movie and FNAF news for today's video. Something interesting to note is that Saw X got its release date moved up to September 29th, so it's no longer releasing on the same day as the FNAF movie, so I'm really thinking that FNAF can really steal the box office that weekend and probably for the whole month of October. I mean, you got The Exorcist Believer coming out in October as well, which is is also a Blumhouse film, so quite frankly, Blumhouse is going to be dominating that month.